Holy crap. Okay, where do I even begin? Let's just get right into it and we can talk about the rest later. So, we start the trailer off with Kenobi on his EOP walking in the distance. This is the same creature he was on in Revenge of the Sith on Tatooine when he handed Luke Skywalker to Uncle Owen and Aunt Beru. It's his main means of transportation and it's his buddy. We hear Kenobi say the fight is done. We lost. Now this may seem like he's speaking to Qui-Gon Jinn, his former master, but I don't think after 10 years he'd be saying this to him right now. I think Qui-Gon would have already known and spoken to Obi-Wan, or something at least. I think this is actually what Kenobi is saying perhaps in the past, either at the Jedi Temple Beacon or he's writing in his journal which he kept around until Luke Skywalker found it and learned from it. Now in Revenge of the Sith during Order 66, the beacon was sent out at the temple to all Jedi that it's safe to return to the temple, and this was in hopes that they would return and get cut down by the 501st or Anakin, whoever was still there during the raid. So in Revenge of the Sith, when we see Obi-Wan and Yoda at the Jedi Temple, during this scene here, we see Obi-Wan turning that beacon off and actually having it say, don't come home, stay hidden. So I think this might be him speaking to the Jedi through that beacon. Obi-Wan is watching over Luke, who is having some fun imagining he's flying or racing, much like his father. He reminds me of a young Annie here. Now this is Obi-Wan's job for the next 20 years from Revenge of the Sith, to watch over Luke, and now that he leaves the planet in, you know, his post essentially, you know, to stay there and watch over the boy, I don't really know how that'll happen and how they'll explain it, but I guess we're gonna find out. Someone has to watch over Luke while he's away, and I don't know who that's gonna be. Could be Ahsoka, it could be Rex, I'm not really sure. Obviously someone capable to protect the boy. The next scene is the Grand Inquisitor speaking to most likely his other Inquisitors. Now the Grand Inquisitor was once a Jedi Temple Guard who turned to the dark side and went on to lead the other fallen Jedi who joined the Empire. They were trained under Vader, who absolutely dummied them, like he hated these guys. He beat them up and he even cut one of their hands off in the comics. The Grand Inquisitor talks of the key to hunting Jedi, to be patient. This is the plot, to hunt remaining surviving Jedi from the days of the Republic, to fulfill Order 66. And this is Vader's main goal, he really only cares about two things, finding Kenobi and killing him, and resurrecting Padme from the dead. So we see the ship of the Grand Inquisitor heading to the Inquisitorious HQ, which is in the middle of the ocean on the moon Nur. Nur was a water moon located in the Mustafar system, and it was the updated HQ for the Inquisitorius, where they took captured Jedi from Order 66 and tortured them either for information or mainly to turn them to the dark side, if they could. Now, the cool thing about this is that the original Inquisitorius HQ is actually in a place called the Works on Coruscant, and this is where Dooku and Palpatine and Maul would all have their secret meetings during the prequel era. Now the reason it was on this distant moon was to create the facade that the Empire is all about peace when in actuality they did a lot of shady work in the shadows. Now I think Vader is here with them, and shout out to whoever pointed this out in the live stream reaction, as we can see a Lambda T4A shuttle, and this shuttle was only used for high level Imperial personnel, mainly the Emperor and Vader. Now of course Vader had his own TIE fighter, but he would travel on this ship as well when he needed to. But of course it could just be Tarkin or Krennic, but I don't really think that they would really care to be there, to be honest. I mean, this place was essentially all about Jedi surviving Order 66, bringing them here and torturing them, turning them to the dark side, and I think that screams Vader. The Grand Inquisitor says the Jedi can't help what they are. You need to be patient in capturing them. They will eventually show themselves due to their compassion leaving a trail. The Jedi Code is like an itch, he says. He cannot help it. And the heat that he refers to is Kenobi or it's this Jedi that's leading them to Kenobi. Vader's main directive is finding Kenobi and bringing Padme back from the dead. So this is, at this point, this is his bread and butter. You know, he's sending the Inquisitors and he is probably looking over them very closely. The Grand Inquisitor is seen on Tatooine interrogating someone with the fifth brother behind him. We see the underwater room of the Inquisitorious HQ, which we saw in Jedi Fallen Order at the end of the game, as stormtroopers stand on guard by the doors. Clone troopers aren't around as much anymore now, and if they are, they're going to be in stormtrooper armor. At the table we see Reva, the new Inquisitor, the fifth brother, and another Inquisitor. Kenobi is being transported to Mos Eisley, I believe, or somewhere on Tatooine, as we see Reva in front of someone hanged in front of the town as Uncle Owen looks away along with everybody else. And I don't think she's just like force holding the person in the air. I think the person's actually dead because everyone's just looking really sad and uh, away. 
Reva is on Dio. It's this new underworld looking planet that reminds me of Nar Shadda, full of crime and grit, reminding me of 1313 as well, and the underworld Coruscant show that George Lucas was creating before selling to Lucasfilm. It seems the Inquisitors are on this Dio planet along with Kenobi, and they're lining people up looking for him or a Jedi. Something has obviously tipped them off that Jedi are here and they're around, whether it's Kenobi or another one that's leading them to Kenobi, whether they know that or not, it's still up for grabs, who knows yet. But they definitely are finding a Jedi and they're on their way to getting very close to capturing him or her. Now what's Kenobi doing here? I'm not sure, and I don't know why he would leave Tatooine, but I guess they'll have to explain that. We see a droid in front of what I think is actually a clone trooper. It might even be a 501st member with the blue markings on his helmet. Now all the markings are probably rubbed off, save for maybe a few patches, and how I think it's a clone is this shot here which this doesn't look like stormtrooper armor to me. I could be wrong, but I compared some photos of stormtroopers and clone troopers, and I think this could be someone we know pretty well, maybe even Rex. Now, you might be wondering, well, why would Rex be wearing his old armor? Maybe it's to blend in, as his face is recognizable. But I feel like he would just wear a cloak, so I'm not really exactly sure. It could be a stormtrooper, but it could also just be a clone. But I mean, this shot of the groin, it just kind of doesn't really scream stormtrooper to me if you compare the photos. The Grand Inquisitor spins his saber to intimidate and obtain information on Kenobi's location, or perhaps the other Jedi who ran away. Some of you thought this is Echo from the Bad Batch, which could be true. I think we'll see some clones in here for sure. Now, as for seeing the rest of the Bad Batch, that would be pretty cool. I hope we see Crosshair or someone. We see the fifth brother in the city of Dio with the stormtroopers, two pods blast off into space, and these could be the two Jedi that we heard about in the leaks that survived Order 66. Both look like they're ending up in different places. Reva ignites her saber on Tatooine in front of this hand tattoo guy, and I don't really know who this is. I think it could be a Jedi survivor or someone who has intel on Kenobi. Either way, regardless if they are force sensitive or not, they are not putting up a fight because that's literally the worst thing you could do is show that you have force powers and that you're a Jedi. Word will eventually get out unless you kill everybody who saw you and that's just not the Jedi way. So I think the premise here is that Kenobi is on the run and the Inquisitors are dead set on finding him from some leads. It's a very simple plot, and I think it's going to be a great show. Now, who I think this is, is Reva, touching the Jedi symbol engraved onto some wood. Now, who would draw this? I'm not sure. Maybe a child. It could be in the past. Perhaps a Jedi survivor drew it as a sign of hope or something. I can't tell what the other etchings are, but we just know that this is the Jedi symbol, and someone drew it. Reva squares off in a dark alley with somebody, and many of you thought it's Cad Bane, but I think Bane would be working with the Empire if he's in this show, no? So I don't see why that she would go against him. Also, if she did, she'd lose really fast. Cad Bane has beat even Kenobi in the Clone Wars, so no way an Inquisitor would stand a chance. I think Reva is put in the show as a new Inquisitor to essentially die to Obi-Wan Kenobi or to someone. Now, it could of course be Kenobi, and this would be the moment that he would have to kill her. We see who I think is Kenobi shooting at her in the next scene and he's not using his lightsaber because obviously that would draw too much attention to the fact that he's a Jedi and he needs to stay quiet. Now on Tatooine, he never used his lightsaber. He actually fought Tusken Raiders just to keep in shape with a gaffy stick and his fists. Now I think he uses the force or maybe, you know, this canister opens and some birds can be seen. This reminds me of the uh, Felucia scene in Order 66 when Aayla Secura dies. And it also reminds me of the birds that are connected to the daughter of Mortis and Ahsoka, Morai. Of course, they're not the same bird. These ones are too skinny to be Morai, but the symbolism could be connected. The next scene is Obi-Wan looking down, and it could be Anakin's lightsaber. It could be his own. Maybe it's Qui-Gon's, as he has all three at this point. And I would love it if Luke ends up using Qui-Gon's lightsaber crystal to power his own green one in Return of the Jedi. As the trailer ends and we get Anakin's dark deeds playing with Vader's breathing once over, this was the same theme played during Anakin crying on Mustafar. The song played during Order 66, of course, but this part in particular was when he was crying and looking back on his life and all that he's done now in the dark side. And I think they chose this because it is obviously such a famous song for Anakin, a theme for Anakin, but it's also showing that that the conflict within Anakin and Vader at this point is still very real, and it's definitely going to be prevalent in the show. I cannot wait for this show. I am super excited. I can't believe we got the trailer already. I'm buzzing. I hope you guys are with me too, and I can't wait to do some watch parties and breakdowns and everything when the show comes out. So we still probably have a few more trailers to go, 
And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to the next one. So I'll be releasing a lot more content regarding the prequels and Kenobi, which <laughs> nothing new here for the channel. But I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video and this breakdown. Leave a like if you did enjoy it, and I'll catch you in the next one. Until then, remember, the Force will be with you always.